Отключаю. Uh-huh. We're live! <laughs> Привет всем! It's Ellie and I finally make a live stream for my Russian speaking club channel. It's been a long time, long time no see. Finally here I am and guys to check the connection and to see that there are people out there uh, right in the comments where you're watching this from. And I will see that you can hear me well, you can see me well, and know where the audience is from. So, I hope to see some comments. Do you hear me, guys? Today we're gonna discuss some interesting topic. Привет, люди! Привет! Watching from the Philippines, Turkey, nice! Uh, China also, so many countries and time zones. Good. Guys, so today we will discuss communications in Russian on the internet. I think that in every language, every country, there are some specific culture aspects Uh, about communicating on the internet. Sometimes it's difficult to understand some uh, specific stuff and today we will discuss just that. So, uh, I named this Communication 101 or Internet Slang in Russian. So, here's the plan for today's stream. At first we will discuss social networks in Russia um, because in Russia we have our own social networks and we will see uh, which ones are the most popular, where you can find Russians, where we usually spend our time on the internet. Then we will discuss uh, how to understand symbols and later you will find out what I mean by symbols um, because Russians use it a lot and how to understand memes on the Russian-speaking uh, area of the internet. And in the last part we will discuss how to understand and to decode abbreviations and slang on the Russian internet. And for this part actually Alena, who is the teacher of our Russian-speaking club, will join us and explain you uh, all of this Uh, abbreviations in Russian because Russians are very lazy, we use so much abbreviations and we shorten things so much that uh, even if you know Russian you might not understand what we mean because we shorten everything and overall when we communicate on the internet it's like another language like you've learned Russian already but you see this and you will not understand it so That's why we decided to explain it to you. Everyone hears me well, right? Portugal here, North Carolina, Kentucky, Florida, nice. So, uh, at first we discuss social networks, right? Where do Russians usually spend their time on the internet? And a sad topic in the beginning, but as you know, because of the sanctions, some social networks and social media were banned in Russia. So, for example, this uh, announcement, which is in Russian, but uh, in the red circle, you can see the networks which were banned in Russia. It means that when you open these networks, uh, the page is just blank or it doesn't download, like it's just blank, uh, which are Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. If you are trying to open Instagram in Russia, you open the app and there is just nothing. Yeah, it doesn't work. Um, and about YouTube, 
It is not banned in Russia. You can still watch any videos. It's gonna be the same YouTube. But um, this uh, ban concerns only monetization. So bloggers who have views from Russia don't get uh, money for the views coming from people who watch it in Russia. So for example, if you're a blogger and your views are from any other country rather than Russia, uh, your views are monetized because people see ads on your channel. But in Russia, if you open a YouTube now, there are no ads at all. It's like <laughs> YouTube premium. Uh, yeah, people in Russia don't see any ads in any videos. That's why bloggers who have Russian-speaking audience, mainly uh, audience uh, and people watching videos from Russia, they don't get uh, their revenue. So, uh, yeah, actually when I was in Russia and I got so used to YouTube without ads, so when I mm, went abroad, I was so shocked with <laughs> so many ads. Well, it's actually bad for bloggers, as uh, you understand, because they don't get um, their revenue. Yeah, so bloggers who had a Russian-speaking audience suffer a lot right now. Uh, many of them open English-speaking channels and some of them um, gave up their channels. Some of them try to find other ways uh, to monetize it. But overall, yeah, these uh, social networks were banned. And actually, there are some Russian social networks which were created and that Russians use. For example, RuTube, which is a Russian YouTube. I wouldn't say that it's more popular than YouTube, like at all. But I do know some people who use uh, RuTube. Actually, I don't know about videos that are uploaded there, maybe some Russian series, etc. Also, apps like Yarus or Yapi um, became kind of popular amongst um, youth. And it's like a Russian version of TikTok or something. And Yandex Zen, also a popular platform right now where you can find articles, and I think they started to make videos now also. So yeah, there are some Russian apps. And here you can see most used social media platforms in Russia as of the last October. So you see that the most popular is VK. Uh, who knows what VK is? Have you ever used VK, guys? Do you know what it is? Uh, Dylan says, I'm coming to Russia this year for studies. Nice! You probably need to know what VK is then. Someone says they can use VPN. Yes, um, you can use VPN and even some VPN apps for free, totally for free. So you can access uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter with the VPN from Russia. Uh, but it's actually a headache. So many people just gave up these social networks. Uh, you see that uh, Instagram, like Twitter, Facebook, they are so low in the ranking of the usage. I would say that the youth, um, they are so used to Instagram. They just love it. People access it every day. So, of course, they are using VPN. Also, there are many businesses who have their um, audience and marketing on Instagram. So, of course, they didn't give up Instagram and they just use VPN. Also, many people just are so used to it and they download VPN and keep using it as always. But um, the older generation, some of them don't have VPN. So they just stop using it. Some people are lazy to use VPN. And also, 
Uh, it's kind of not working all the time. It's I don't know, when I was in Russia, sometimes I was just irritated that it's slow. And then if you're using VPN, Instagram works, but other apps don't work. So you need to switch it on, switch it off all the time. It was a headache. Yeah, VK, uh, someone answered, is Vkontakte. Uh, Vkontakte is, as you see, the most popular social network. And it's not like Insta, it's not like YouTube. I think the closest um, comparison would be Facebook. It's like a Russian Facebook. People communicate there, they upload their pictures there, uh, use it as a messenger. Uh, but the most popular messengers in Russia are Telegram and WhatsApp. By the way, the um, creator of Vkontakte is the same who created Telegram. I think the most popular messenger is WhatsApp, but Telegram is becoming more and more popular. Um, and I know that people use it in other countries too, right? Telegram. But I think it's the most popular in Russia and usually if you want to connect to someone we ask for WhatsApp or Telegram. Um, anyone uses VK here? I see that some people do. Yeah, it's like a Russian Facebook, exactly. And the second most popular platform that you see, uh, this logo is Adnaklasniki. Um, uh, no one from youth uses Adnaklasniki. I would say it's more for older people. Adnaklasniki actually means classmates. And it was like super popular when our parents, they didn't have social networks, right? And maybe for many years they lost any contact with um, their friends from childhood, with their classmates from childhood. And when this social network appeared, when the internet appeared, I still remember this time when my parents downloaded Adnaklasniki. And maybe after 30 or 40 years, after not speaking to friends from their childhood, they started to find uh, their Adnaklasniki, which is classmates. And they were finding them and uh, getting so excited, like, wow, uh, now we're getting in touch with our Adnaklasniki. It was a huge thing, but it did not spread to the youth. The youth was always using VK. Adnaklasniki for older generations is very popular, like my parents. Uh, like, my mom would always use Adnaklasniki. And uh, another popular platform, as you see, is Instagram. Uh, yeah, I would say it's very popular. YouTube, Twitter. I know nobody from Russia who would use Twitter, to be honest. Like, no one. I know it's a huge thing in other countries, but yeah, not really in Russia. Facebook, I think maybe before it was popular, now also like, don't know people using it. TikTok, I was surprised to see it this low in the ranking because um, school children actually use it a lot, I would say. Always do these stupid dances for TikTok. You can see people doing TikToks on, in the streets. Uh, and TikTok is not banned, by the way. Oh, yeah, it's Chinese, actually. So... Okay, the next part of our stream is understanding Russians on the internet and Russian on the internet. So, how do Russians express emojis, um, emotions <laughs> on the internet? Uh, usually they don't use emojis and if you've ever talked to Russians on the internet you've probably got these brackets all the time in the conversation, in the chat. 
put plus or write something in the comments also if you've ever um, got these brackets when you were talking to someone. Yeah. Uh, and probably if you get these brackets, you're wondering like, why do I get these symbols? What is it? But uh, it's actually a huge thing on the Russian speaking internet. Um, we use it all the time, like all the time. If you're speaking to a Russian, you will get these brackets. Now let's decode what it means. So, a bracket is actually a smile. As you see in the first line, it's just a shortening for a smile. I guess Russians are just too lazy to put the colon, which is like the eyes. <laughs> yeah, it's already short, but Russians shortened even a smile. So we put a bracket. And um, it's like so popular that now for us it's like being polite. If someone texts you Privet and puts a dot, it actually seems um, a bit angry. Yeah, and Russians usually write Privet, for example, and put this bracket. It's like, I'm polite, I'm nice, I'm smiling, kind of. So, uh, if he puts two brackets, it means that he's very in a very good mood and the more brackets you see it means um, that it's something funnier like if a person puts three brackets or sometimes even four five and more brackets it means it is so hilarious like I'm laughing out loud he writes something and like many many brackets it means that the person is laughing. I don't know why not put just a laughing emoji, but it's a huge thing in Russia and we're used to these brackets. And then the reversed bracket means that a person is sad. And the more reversed brackets there are, it means that the person is super sad. Parenthesis, yeah. Brackets, parenthesis. So, for example, I write something like this, you can see in the chat. And uh, it's like aha ha ha ha, which means laughing in Russian, and then many brackets, it means like it's hilarious. So, if you want to say that something is hilarious, you put more brackets. And the last symbol means that you are sending a kiss. Um, by the way, um, is that a thing only in Russia or in some other countries you also use something like this, some symbols? Can you let me know? Or maybe you also use parentheses, this kind of brackets. Yeah, parentheses, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's not only a Russian thing. No? Only in Russia, I guess. <laughs> okay. Let's proceed then. Uh, and now let's talk about memes on the Russian speaking uh, internet. They are also quite specific and sometimes I think if you see them you are not gonna get the humor. So you need to understand like what what they mean. Yeah, and now I see in the comments that it's only in Russia people use symbols instead of emojis. So um, there is yeah. 
uh, one of the most popular memes on the Russian internet is named Как тебе такое Elon Musk? which is translated as How do you like this Elon Musk? And it's mocking some inventions that people make as you see on the right picture for example a person is wearing a plastic bottle instead of slippers and he says как тебе такой Elon Musk it's like do you get this Elon Musk do you see my invention and usually all these inventions are yeah stupid yeah let's say the truth truth they're just stupid hilarious and I don't know, I'm just... Uh, yeah, you see. Or, for example, this. Uh, it also says, Как тебе такой Elon Musk? And someone is heating their pizza on an iron. Or on the second picture, on the right, you see uh, the... Um, I don't know the word for this the wooden cork on a lid have you ever did that because you can see uh, the invention from the right side picture in any house in russia it's like a super useful thing in a household and for me this is something like very normal but have you ever seen this why do we need this wooden cork um, on the lid? Yeah, we use it all the time. Like for me, uh, <laughs> it was also like this. And they are also saying, Как тебе такой Elon Musk? Like, do you get this Elon Musk? Look at my invention. And these people uh, are saying like look at my invention I think this is something um, genius and it's like challenging Elon Musk but actually all these inventions are stupid okay uh, people say I've never seen that before actually this is used because when you're cooking something the lid is getting very hot yeah so you can't touch it and people put this cork so that uh, you can take it with a like take just the cork and the wood isn't he heated so yeah every time uh, in a Russian house you see uh, a cork in a lid like this or some other <laughs> genius inventions on the on the left uh, they're heating mocha on an iron why are they <laughs> hitting all the food on an iron? I don't know. They're even making coffee on an iron and say, ah, look at my invention. Or on the right side, they're putting a broom to clean the windshield, the like the glass of the car. And also say, Elon Musk, your inventions are so... Uh, simple look at mine invention <laughs> uh, another memes that are popular in Russia are middle ages paintings it's named the Suffering Middle Ages, Stradaishe uh, Srednivikovia. Um, and people are making fun that in all these pictures people have these suffering faces or some weird faces and they just put different inscriptions to make them funny. Uh, is this popular in any other countries to use Middle Ages paintings for memes, but it is popular on the Russian-speaking segment of the internet. 
Uh, other memes that are popular is cute pronunciation, uh, which is basically about using words, but uh, they are pronounced in a cute way. Uh, so, for example, on the left, smoke. Uh, this word doesn't exist, and if you don't uh, understand the memes, you will not understand this word. Or on the right side, aputi, niputu. These words also don't exist in Russian. And I think this memes is just a headache for those who is learning Russian because they will not find this um, on... Trans they can't translate it. They can't find this in a dictionary because it's just taking uh, different words and writing the wrong but cute pronunciation. Aputi actually is the word atpusti. Niputu uh, is actually the word nipushu, but they make it sound cute. And actually, I don't know how I would understand this if Russian wasn't my native language. Aputi, niputu, like no way. I don't even know how <laughs> I understand this, I guess because sometimes we say it in a conversation. Um, yeah, but you have to know how it should sound to understand these memes. I guess it would be like super difficult for those who are learning Russian. It's already difficult and they see this and they're like, what is this? This word, these words don't exist in a translator. Another popular meme is with cats. And I guess everywhere memes with cats <laughs> are popular. And uh, this one was particularly popular. It means Natasha, are you sleeping? Uh, and people put um, different uh, texts to these cats. Like, Natasha, are you sleeping? Another one says, Natasha, it's already 6 a.m. Natasha, we like broke everything. Natasha, we broke absolutely everything. It's time to wake up. And actually, any memes with cats are popular and people just put uh, different inscriptions. Uh, and this fox, uh, at one time, it was like the most popular shared pictures picture on the Russian internet. Uh, so how it started was that one man wanted to sell this scarecrow fox on uh, Avita, I think, which is like a Russian Amazon. But you see that this fox looks... <laughs> Uh, like who would buy it? This fox is just weird, right? Yeah, and people started to make fun of this fox and for example They created a meme on the right side which says me in life and me in a passport and put this fox and Yeah, like this scarecrow fox is <laughs> very popular uh, on the Russian internet. Then people also make fun uh, out of Russian post office. Actually, we always make fun of our post office. For example, on the left picture, uh, it's a sloth. And they say that um, the staff who works at the Russian post office is like a sloth. Because they work so slowly and you have to wait for a long time and he's like um, yeah it's like they are how to say in Russian there is a word named tormos which means a very slow person so yeah they're saying that people who work at the Russian post office are very slow thinking or on the right side, you see the screen from Interstellar movie, but on the background, it's a post office and the inscription says, it's a very weird place. One hour here equals 28 working days on the earth. 
so everyone is mocking the Russian post office. Actually, I don't think that it's bad. Like, I always get my shipping, get my orders, get my letters on time, and um, I've never had problems. Um, but maybe it's slower than in other countries, or yeah, some people have problems when they go to the post office, maybe there are big lines, or some staff is just slow. Yeah, we always make fun of the Russian post office. And another popular memes are connected to Gopniks. <laughs> Who knows uh, what Gopnik is? Yeah, there are so many memes with them. Yeah, it's like... Um, oh my god, wait. I get a call. Um, it's actually Alena, and she will join us soon. That's why she was calling. Are you guys excited to see Alena? Put plus in the comments. Uh, so Gopniki is members of a delinquent society of Russia. They are like um, working class people from a lower um, income class of Russia and they are delinquent, they are rude and they always make this Slav squat if you know what I mean. It's like um, a popular thing for Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, uh, other Soviet countries. So they make this Slav squad, always sit like this with beer, always eat sunflower seeds. They're very rude and acting like um, bad guys. And they're always wearing Adidas. They even have songs about them. It's named Tripaloski, which means three lines, which is uh, Adidas. And that they're always wearing Adidas. I don't know why Adidas, actually. Adidas is expensive, but I guess they're wearing the black market Adidas. Like they buy um, fake Adidas, which is sometimes Abibas. <laughs> And this meme uh, is about the recent sanctions. So it says Russian Gopniks on the left. Gopniks before um, foreign shops closed in Russia. And on the, <laughs> on the right side, Gopniks after foreign shops closed in Russia. So if you get it, like when Adidas closed, <laughs> now Gopniks look like this. Yeah, Adibas, Abibas, <laughs> like changing letters to make it a fake Adidas. But I think this meme is just, it's, it's so hilarious. Um, because we have these Gopniks in Russia, um, they are funny, weird, like super weird, delinquent guys, um, yeah, and uh, seeing this on the right picture, like after closing Adidas, yeah, it, this meme is funny. Uh, another memes that are popular are with Babushka. Of course, babushka is a very popular meme, especially the one that you see in the bottom, which is like this one. Uh, so this meme is about what babushka approves and what she disapproves of. So on the top, uh, she says fries. She's like, nah. And then uh, it's a babushka cooked potatoes, and she's like, yeah. 
that's the right choice. Or popcorn, no. Sunflower seeds, yeah. Uh, sunflower seeds is a huge thing in Russia. We love it. People, um, like, you saw slides with Gopniks, they eat it all the time. But people also... It's like a huge thing, actually. Um, sunflower seeds are in all the supermarkets. People buy it um, to drink beer, like a snack. Or when they go for a walk, they like to buy these sunflower seeds. By, by the way, they are not um, peeled, so they are always in the black cover. And Russians usually go and uh, peel them like in their mouth. It's... It's a thing in Russia. Um, yeah, babushka's always right. I think this is the best comment to describe this meme. And overall, like, yeah, if babushka approves, then it's good. Other memes that are popular on the Russian-speaking segment of the internet is comparing anything uh, with Russia and the US, like comparing Russia and the US. This is a huge thing in Russia, comparing these two countries, comparing us Russians to Americans, comparing Russia to the US, like all the time. So, of course, there are so many memes, memes of comparing Russian and the US president life things, languages, habits, like everything. It's a huge thing. Uh, this one, for example, on the left, uh, Russia says to the US, US, look, you can't do this. And you see these, like, uh, planes, yeah, and all of them are in a perfect line, and they make, like, a Russian flag. It means it's, like, the most modern, nice, technologies, the best pilots, look at them flying like this. It's like, wow, look at these Russian skills. And then on the right side, the US says, but you can't do this. And it's just a road. And it's about Russians mocking roads in Russia because our roads are so bad. Like they're good in big cities, but if you go somewhere to the village, like, they're so bad, it's like being uh, like this on a roller coaster if you're going somewhere, like, <laughs> uh, we have a saying that in Russia there are no roads, but only directions. Um, and basically, oh, we have so many memes about um, Russia, Russians mocking Russia, like, this meme is an example. Uh, also, these memes about Russia, все нормально, это Россия. Like, we have so many memes saying, это Россия. It's like, what can we do? This is Russia. And on the left, it's like, it's okay, it's Russia. Uh, and these memes are usually about um, Russians drinking vodka, having bears, uh, wearing ushanka hats, like all the stereotypical things about Russia, there are memes about it, or on the right side uh, it says uh, what Americans think um, Russia looks like, and it's like guys uh, eating ice cream, being in shorts while it's minus 97, and there is a dog in Valenki and Ushanka hat, and a bear yeah, all this stuff. And that's it for me. Guys, any comments, questions, anything you would like me ans uh, to answer before I go? Русская дорога. Yeah, дорога means road. All the freezing and thawing is really bad for roads. Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, super hard um, to make nice roads in Russia. Um, and like every year 
or even after every winter they make reparation so all the time they need to make reparation 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 and as russia is so huge i guess it's hard <laughs> to make nice roads to reach everywhere <laughs> vodka and bear are interconnected <laughs> to each other My favorite place in Russia. Maybe Kamchatka or Yakutia. Well, thank you everyone. And that's not the end. Because we have Alona. But wait, Alona. <laughs> um, Okay, see you guys soon. Так, поехали. Uh, всем, uh, всем привет, Элина. Thank you for your uh, introducing us uh, all this um, cultural memes. Uh, so, guys, uh, my part will be a little bit um, to decode everything about uh, um, Russian uh, small messages or some kind kind of abbreviation. But before we start, I want a little bit know about you. So, guys, uh, tell me please in comment if you ever learned Russian in your life or maybe you're already on the way to learn Russian and uh, if you learn Russian what is your uh, level like maybe A1, A2 or maybe you are already fluent and um, I want to know this because uh, normally, language language is a big process that we learn how to introduce ourselves, how to communicate and everything. And sometimes these levels show for us our um, level as the way of speak, read or write. But uh, I can tell you that the highest, the highest level of operate language or half language is to understand jokes black humor, sarcast. So if you can understand sarcastic way or memes or jokes or some stand-up comedy, it means that you are already really, really high level. Okay. So normally, if you understand something uh, in the way of humor, sense of humor, it shows that you are have really, really high level. So I uh, recommend you a little bit to understand joke. Why? Because normally part of the joke is the truth. So it's our reality. For example, if you go to stand up of any country, you will understand uh, why uh, they are discuss some topic. What did you discuss? And this help you to understand reality. Okay, so guys, let me check where where we are. If we have some uh, people who already learn Russian language, so here have A2. Okay, it's already good. Beginner Duolingo. Duolingo is the best. We know this. I can read Kartoshka. Kartoshka, it's already high. It's important. I don't speak, I don't understand Russian language. Okay, but from today you will learn something, okay? So lowest level in Russian language. Okay, so guys, today uh, I will tell you some uh, some small abbreviation. Okay, so you can already understand some really short uh, thing. And after this, I will give you a small quiz. Okay, so try to understand what I'm talking. And after this, we try to decode. Okay, so Russian accelerator for me. Okay, I'm here. It's the best accelerator ever. The first step, it works. No voice. That guys, everybody can hear me. Uh, okay, thank you for wonderful information. So, uh, guys, the most important thing um, uh, that uh, I want to tell you about uh, Russian humor, Russian jokes, and all this kind of uh, internet um, uh, thing, that sometimes um, foreigners, foreigners take the information that is a little bit not valid okay the invalid 
So what what I want to talk under this, um, because sometimes I talk with the people and of course you have stereotype about the Russia, about the vodka, beers or some kind of mafia, Gopniks, KGB, uh, Kremlin, propaganda, all this kind of stuff. And of course, some of this it's true now or something that is already really, really old. OK, so sometimes drugs that people use like foreign use with the native speakers from movies, for example, from some um, action movies, for example, like Mission Impossible, Fast and Furious, some kind of stuff. It's a little bit old. OK, it's some uh, kind of drug that was actual like in 2010, for example, some talk about Boris, uh, joke about Natasha, about drink, uh, or be a really, uh, I don't know, talking like like this. This is a little bit uh, old. And sometimes when people arrive in Russia or they uh, meet uh, native speakers, they try to joke like, oh, Tavarish, or oh, you're from Mafia, or do you know Gopnik style or Hardbass? or something like this, uh, native speaker will look at you like, um, um, okay, okay. And they will don't understand you. Not because uh, they don't understand your language, it's just because something is already not valid. Okay, so sometimes uh, jokes that we see uh, in a foreign media, it's a little bit old. It means that it's Mm, already not actual okay so try to uh, read some kind of um, stuff that native speakers read like instagram or wiki telegram uh, some russian um, uh, source like reddit in russian um, uh, we have uh, a source that called pikabu okay this is uh, like a russian reddit where you have all kind of jokes OK, so guys, I want to uh, tell you uh, the first uh, the first thing that Russian used is the word CHO. OK, CHO, 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 TAK VOT ANO CHO, now this uh, small meme, CHO, uh, who can um, who can guess what does mean CHO? CHO, maybe someone already knows some words. Tick. Hard bus is hilarious. Yeah, it was like hard bus was hilarious like five years ago. Uh, now, not so not so fun. Duck. Okay, so guys, I wanna for you try to guess what does mean cho. What can what can be cho cho takoe cho da cho exactly. So what can be cho? Absolute joke. What exactly? What at the, uh, it's abbreviation from the word что. Okay. Normally uh, we say что. Извините, uh, что что вы сказали? Да. But sometimes you can say чё. For example, your mother call you. Hey, сын, иди кушать. Come here to eat. And you say чё, чё. Uh, Chua is mean what? What do you want? Чё ты хочешь? Normally we use it when we speak with. Um, someone in a uh, message okay so the next one uh что? yeah this mean what exactly uh, someone whose name who could who cried что? what mili tulf you get what okay uh, so the next one uh, the next one um, uh it's um, really really popular is when we talk sha Okay, sh, it's a hilarious uh, letter, sometimes frightening everyone. Sha is mean сейчас. Сейчас is mean now. Now, for example, hey, пойдем, uh, пойдем в бар. Mm -hmm. Sha, sha пойдем. Да. Sha is mean сейчас. So normally we will use it when we text message. We will not say сейчас, we will say sha, sha. Uh-huh. Uh, so, for example, the first uh, the first uh, meme they talk spakucha spakucha is mean come. Sha все будет. Spakucha sha все будет. It mean keep calm. Everything will be I'm like I will do everything. Spakucha sha все будет. The most uh, popular and the most important for Tuesday, I think, word it's выхи. Okay, выхи from the word выходной. Okay, выходной. Выходной 
это суббота и воскресенье, выходной. Or day off, okay? It can be weekend. So normally we not say the word выходной. Да? We already have U in the middle of a word, so it's too many job. So that's why we decide make it slow and uh, short, okay? We say выхи, выхи, да, например. Uh, что, что ты делаешь на выхе, на выхах? Also, we can say выхи, выхах, okay? So, guys, let me know if you already heard about these words. Выхи, ща, чо. Okay, so the next, uh, the next one, uh, what we have here, Uh, it's when we talk about the numbers, okay? When we talk about the numbers, Russian is a little bit painful because it's too big, sometimes change a lot. So that's why we try to cut it, yeah? So the first one that is the most popular, it's when we talk the question skoka. Skok, skoka, skoka, from the word skolka, okay? The word skolka. It means how much, how many, да? for example. Uh, сколько кофе, сколько пиццы, сколько стоит. Сколько is mean how much, how many. But, but it, instead of say сколько, we say сколько. Сколько стоит, uh, сколько, uh, извините, сколько, сколько, да, сколько, that you can see on the picture. Also, we will say about the numbers. Now, for example, we have a thousand. Uh, thousand, it's tisicha, tisicha, it's a big word, tisicha, so normally we say tisha, tisha, okay, uh, if you, if you know guys, uh, they have really nice singer in, uh, um, a Russian singer, his name is Noise MC, I don't know if you know, have you ever heard about him, his name is Noise MC, he is a rapper, Noise MC, nope, Okay, so his name is uh, Noise MC, and he has really nice songs that called Tisiche Tish, Tish Tish Tish. So they uh, uh, read a lot of um, numbers uh, that are uh, using as a slang. Okay, it's uh, called Tish Tisiche Tish. You can uh, Google it after our our uh, stream. Okay, так, let me check if you have any question here. What is it? Transcelleration. Transcelleration, uh, guys. Um, transcelleration is good, uh, but not always. Okay, not every time uh, right for you. Try to check with your uh, weight to talk. Okay, and after this, you will get this tissue. Uh, so, Rosbook, Rostok, Rosgram. <laughs> Rosgram, it's painful, guys. <laughs> Rostok, Rosgram, uh, Rosgram, uh, it's like Abibas. It uh, exists, um, but not everybody use. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day will be, um, but not, not now. Okay, let me say, do you say? Riba? Ah, Cho. Cho? Cho, we say like C-H-O. Cho. 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 It's not unlike not, not like tsho, but more cho. Che like cheese in English. Cho. Cho ty hochesh. Cho. Okay. Uh, so this is the numbers. Uh the most uh, popular. Uh, next one is uh, for billionaires, but maybe we have one in our chat. Uh, it's uh, called million. Million. Uh, million, it's easy. Guys, uh, tell me, what does mean million? Maybe uh, we have some oligarchs in our chat. If you are there, let me know. Million. Uh -huh. Million. No. Million. So, million is mean million. Yeah. So, million. Uh, and uh, instead of saying million, this big word, we say lamb. Да? Лям, например, лям рублей, лям долларов. Да? Ты видел, а, эта машина стоит лям. Да, it cost лям. Лям, it's been one million. Два ляма, три ляма, четыре ляма. Да? Instead of million, we say лям. 
Okay. Uh, next one, the most uh, important in our life on Tuesday, it should be also, is the pair. The pair from the word Zarabatne plata that means salary. Okay. Uh, so normally we say когда the pair. When is your salary? The pair. У меня the pair норм. Хорошее. Хорошее the pair. Okay. Or oh, на этой работе the pair супер. Okay. The pair. Скок, скока the pair. Тысяча лям. Да? So, for example, if you will stay uh, in some group of people, that you can ask, да, сколько, сколько ЗП, да? how, how much is your uh, salary, да, сколько ЗП, сколько, сколько, лям, о, oh, это хорошо, so you find good Russian. Uh, so, guys, next one, it's a little bit, um, <laughs> it's under censure, so if you have children, let them out. Okay, um, it's um, uh, kind of bad words, da? not not so bad, but uh, you can uh, still use it. Uh, it's not like a re really really bad, but it's strong one. Okay, I am the pair. I want lamb dollars. Да, я тоже хочу лям долларов. Лям долларов это хорошо. Лям евро. Еще лучше, еще лучше. Uh, so, the next one, the next one, it's ХЗ. Окей, Х, like English, uh, house, Х, Х, ХЗ. ХЗ. It's really, really useful in a message when you talk. Да, for example, uh, где Анна? Анна, where is Анна? ХЗ. ХЗ, где Анна? ХЗ. ХЗ, it's mean хрен. Хрен знает. Хрен знает is mean uh, like horse radish no. Да? But uh, here, хрен, this horse radish, this substitute other bad word that uh, use for um, organ of man. Okay? Uh, that one is really, really uh, under uh, children. Nobody <laughs> can't use it. Okay? But this one you can use it. This in social uh, acceptable. Like you can use it on the street. You can use it in the message, of course, between the friends. But other one that also starts with a H is not acceptable. Acceptable on the street or in some public place only if you are in some place that is close and between the friends but friends night it means that you don't know да сколько сколько зарплата сколько зп да сколько зп у него да how much is his salary сколько зп friends night хз хз it's really really important and really really popular like everywhere you find хз uh, so, guys, tell me, please, if in your language you have any vegetable that you can use as a bad word. In Russian, it's хрен. Хрен, horse rabbit, we use as a bad word. Okay? Хрен знает, на хрен, ни хрена. They have a lot of, a lot of kind of way how we can use this uh, vegetable as using in a bad word. Okay? Yeah. Bad sausage? I don't know. Bad sausage? Uh -huh. Yeah, хрен, хрен знает. It's really, really popular. So, хрен, it's one of the uh, vegetables that we use as a bad word. And also we have other words that called fig. Fig знает. Fig знает. It's also fig. Figa is a fruit, uh, fruit uh, that we also use as a bad word. So, guys, let me know if in your language you have any any vegetable that uh, use as a bad word. Так, uh, for horseradish. Yeah, exactly. Хрен, it's horseradish. Exactly. We use this vegetable uh, as a bad word in uh, Russian. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, next time that you will see this uh, vegetable, you can remember about Russian, that we use it as a bad word. Because it's a substitute uh, another bad word, so we can use it as the same uh, way when we use blin in Russian. Blin, blini, yeah, blin, blini, uh, it's uh, other substituted word with a bad word. Blin is mean pancake, so it's like, oh, blin. 
Africa, like an English shot, and we use instead of other other word. Okay. So the next one, guys, a little bit uh, left, but the next one is really, really magic word. Really, if you remember this word. You can go to Russia tomorrow and everything will be okay with you. Okay, so this is the most important word that's called Davai. Davai. Um, guys, let me know if you ever heard about this word, Davai. Maybe you were listening to this in some place, in some way. The word Davai. Это кайф. Kaif, uh, also we use Kaif, uh, but already not so popular. Like it was popular um, like maybe three years ago, uh, but now it's not so popular. It's not, it's not like top of uh, hype that people use. Sugar instead of saying poop. Okay, sugar. Okay. So the next word is Davai. Davai it's super word. So if you're a football fan or you're a fan of uh, any kind of babushka or something happened and you want to support someone. So you say Davai Davai. Now, for example, you go to a stage and say Davai Davai. Yeah, it means that you want to for this person do really well, the best well. Like let's do this, let's do this, Davai Davai. Okay, it's the first meaning. Uh, the second meaning is mean давай по бокальчику. Давай по бокальчику вина. Okay, давай по бокальчику вина. It's like let's drink some wine. Или давай по бокальчику пива. Давай по бокальчику вина. Давай. So here you uh, offer person to drink with you together. Okay, normally it's between the friends. Давай по бокальчику вина. Следующее, it's when you want to offer someone something. Uh, let's do something. Да? Например, давай закажем суши. Давай закажем суши. Да? Let's order суши. Давай в кино. Давай на стадион. Да, давай. It's let's do something. Да? We have some idea. Let's do this. Давай. Давай будем это делать. Okay. Давай. Давай закажем суши. And one of the most popular that we use, uh, it's in the word goodbye. Okay. This is the most popular that using uh, between the native speakers. The word давай. Да? For example, you are in the cell phone. Алло, Элина, у нас сегодня YouTube. Да, we have YouTube today. Mm -hmm. Давай, давай, ага, uh -huh. давай. Ну ладно, давай. Да, so I can uh, talk, давай, let's do this. Uh, давай, let's order this. Давай, yeah, it's a good idea. And at the end you say, mm, ну ладно, okay, давай. Instead of say, пока, о, до свидания, was that uh, Russians normally talk? We say Davai. Really, really common. Uh, all natives do, especially uh, old generation, like for example, my father, he also say, ah, oh, ладно, Davai, Davai. So Davai is mean пока. Пока, goodbye. Okay? So, guys, let me know if you have something here interesting. In UFC, Habib. Так, who is a Habib? Raj, давай. Yes, if you are, if you are support Habib, you can say давай, давай. <laughs> так, хорошо, movie here, actors, they, uh, давай. Mm -hmm. Бабки, бабки деньги, да. So now you know that, uh, guys, we have бабушка, but if you say бабки, бабки из деньги. Uh, but бабки, it's also um, a stereotype word from um, 90s i think uh, so it's a little bit old old way to use like young generation will not see babki we will say bablo bablo instead of babki like my my uh, father can say this maybe grandfathers will say oh babki kaki da uh, but now we will say more bablo Бабло, баблище, баблишка, бабло is more popular. Бабки. Так, I like. Uh, classic. Actually, classic is that you write there. 
classic uh, that uh, one guy <laughs> guy put there. Uh, that is a uh, I can't um, uh, pronounce. It's really popular between um, gamers. In real life, we never use it. Never use it. it it's only gamers that's like 14 years old, mother on, uh, at work, so he use any bad words that uh, he can during the short period of time she at work, okay? So if you are not 14 years old, a gamer, not so acceptable to use this. I uh, visited St. Petersburg in six months. Okay, really good. Dog. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, guys, this is uh, one of the popular words. So, you can remember Dubai, like super, super cool. And the last one, last one, uh, of course, if you know how to draw, if you already know some sarcastic saying, if you already know a little bit meme, we have to laugh. So, here we have some kind of laughing. Uh, uh, let me know if you are not English speaker like a uh, native uh, English, uh, what what uh, letters do you use? Because in English, like H, A, H, A, like ha, ha, ha. And what kind of letters do you use in your language? Like, because, for example, I know that Brazilian use K, K, K. Uh, Spanish, they use J, A, like ha, ha, ha. And different people use different way to show that they are laughing at something let me know if you have some ideas here blin yes blin uh, we say it's like oh blin что это такое and what's happening now uh, blin mm -hmm. yeah uh, so haha <laughs> yeah this is a spanish j a j a normally the spanish we use yeah Exactly. Um, I think maybe Japanese or Chinese speakers, they use different way also. Uh, Spanish, yeah. So I have a lot of Spanish speaker here. Yeah, laughing out loud. Um, no, it's not so uh, not so hard to understand Russian meme. Uh, the, the problem that sometimes we don't know context. So if you don't know, the story behind is not funny at all. But if you know story behind, like for example with Elon Musk, uh, because uh, Elon Musk, an idea like, what do you think about that Elon Musk? It was about uh, guys that invent uh, some kind of stuff uh, in Russia and they really wanted to uh, have audience of uh, Elon Musk, so they write to him a message, emails for he uh, do something, uh, like to enter to contact and make some partnership with them, but uh, Elon Musk not to answer. So what they did, they uh, ordered a huge banner, huge banner uh, of announcement and put in front of his uh, window of his office. And they write there, what do you think about this Elon Musk? And make like a QR code for his scan and enter to contact with them because it was long story so and uh, elon musk really saw this uh, announcement and he really entered in contact with these guys and they had some conversations they have some kind of stuff and after this this became a huge meme that this thing how they create marketing uh, to pay attention of elon musk works and after this a start became really really popular so sometimes it's important to know background of joke just looking at meme is not enough that sometimes we know some uh, memes from friends from movies from uh, leo dicaprio or wolf uh, the wall street or i don't know some kind of stuff that is international and you can guess but have some local memes that you will not understand because you don't know context that's why sometimes it's important dive, understand, and after this laughing. So it's a big work until we arrive here. Okay. So muerto de ri, da. Uh, oh, in France is MDR, more de rir. Wow. I didn't know that. Это будет жора. Oh, oh, Arabic way is really nice. I even uh, could create uh, some uh, beautiful tattoo like this. It's nice. I'll also say haha out of loud. 
Yeah. Okay. Muerto de la risa. This because of laughing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Oswin Hul answer ha ha ha. Yeah. Ha ha ha. But if you say ha ha ha, after this we not put brackets. It's already ha ha ha, so don't need brackets. So normally we use ha ha ha. It's um, every time was absolutely popular, and for the last time it became aru. Aru. It's uh, like a lol in English, loud, uh, laughing out loud. But aru, what does it mean aru? Aru, it means arat. Like, ah! It's arat. It means arat. Yeah? So arat means shout. So, and this aru became really, really popular. Even you put caps lock. So you will see uh, normally uh, that people talk uh, aru in caps lock. So it means that joke is true. It's really, really fun. And this means that you will see the talk like tip ora, like kind of shout, galasino, golas, golas is mean voice. So it means that I'm laughing in my voice, like out loud. Da aru or da aru galasino. It's really popular. But uh, this or also is coming to disappear. It's almost disappearing. Normally we stop to use it. It was popular, like peak of hype was some years ago. Now it's already going down, down. So I think soon will disappear. Okay. So tell me guys, maybe I talk really fast if you understand everything. Привет. When to do brackets? Uh, we use brackets, uh, for example, I don't know, uh, I ask you, давай по бокальчику вина. Да, let's drink a wine and make these brackets. So these brackets can be like you are right to me and you are smiling. Like, hmm, let's do something interesting. Or you also can use it as pick up, like flirting. And you can also use uh, these brackets. For example, you said, ты красивая, you are beautiful, and make these brackets. Okay. Uh, Alone, we not use the brackets. Like we can use alone brackets if someone write for you something, and you don't know so much what to answer, so you put brackets like ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So let me check if we have something else before we start our quiz. Next one will be our quiz. So let me um, know if you are uh, ready. It will be a challenge. Not so big, but challenge, okay. I meet a lot of Russian when I live in Korea. They are very, very, very nice. Uh, I hope so. Так, может быть, я слышала, потому что это значит. Может быть, я слышала, это краем уха. Может быть, я слышал краем уха. У нас есть уха, уха, край уха. Край уха is mean that um, I heard it some pole far, some place, but I'm not sure about this. Yes, little cry muha, just a little bit hurt about this, but I don't know. I'm not sure about this. Um, don't show for work. Uh, yeah, uh, in uh, in Asia, I have a lot of Russian. Actually, uh, <laughs> I know someone who now in Asia. Uh, and uh, it's popular because there is warm. So Russians, uh, they are uh, moved to Thailand or some kind of uh, Asian country where it's warm and good. Okay, very interesting. Yes, ready. Oh, okay. So if you're ready, we are going to the last point of our conversation today. Uh, this will be a small challenge. Okay, so here will be a message between two people. I will read it. I will read it. Okay, and you try to decode some words there. Okay, so guys, let 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 me try to read for you. Okay, Ару смешная шутка. Что делаешь на выхе? Ща хазе, а что? Давай закажем пиццу. Давай. Okay, so this is a small uh, conversation between two people that normally you will see this uh, uh, actually in real life. Uh, so, guys, tell me what does mean aru, the first word in uh, this uh, message, aru. What means this? Aru, смешная шутка. Aru, now what, what can mean this, this word from the beginning, aru? Like we learn 
uh, some words. Da? So the last one was Aru. Maybe you already guess what does mean this. Okay, waiting. Can you repeat the first one? We will repeat during the time that we will talk. Aru. Da? Aru is a very funny joke. Okay, so the first answers here. Guys, waiting. We are discussing between Ural in Russia. Oh, it's far. Russia in Asia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, actually, Russia in uh, Europe and Asia. I already forgot it. Oh, lol. Yeah, this is Aru is me, lol. Exactly. So the next one that was Cho Delish Navihi. So what does mean Cho Delish Navihi? This word Vihi. Vihi. When it uh, this. Vihi. Some it's some part of time that we learn today. We have sha i vihi. So what does mean vihi? Who can tell me? Vihi. Uh, Cho delish na vihi. Da aru lol maladiet. And Asia. No, but I mean Asia more South Asia, <laughs> not that cold Asia where that we have. Uh, так, uh, so now we answer for что делаешь на выхе? Что делаешь на выхе? Выхе. What does mean that word выхе? Waiting for the first answer. Выхе. And we have the last one question after, and we are finished about this part of learning today. Я изучал русском в российском центре. Хорошо. What are you doing this weekend? Exactly. Выхи is mean weekend. Суббота и воскресенье. Выхи – выходной. Okay, выхи – выходной. And the last one, the word давай. This is my favorite word, actually. I use it always. Давай everywhere. Actually, I like all kind of ideas that people give me, especially if they call me to travel. I always say давай. Давай, поехали, давай сделаем, давай, все будем делать. Давай, the word давай. Так, давай. Да, вот uh, there have uh, uh, someone person with the M, 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 A, G, G и много uh, more letters. I hope you are not bored. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> Who's a, yes, uh, they have bad words like Heze, Heze, Hey, Heze, Chue, Dielo. I don't know what I'm doing. Heze. That normally this conversation can be only between a friends or someone that we really know each other. That not uh, recommend to parents, that different parents, different uh, rules, but you can try. Okay. Chue, Chue, Da. Da. But Rasa, uh, Rasa, no, Paka. Пока. Да. Давай. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Here we not uh, use in the way давай, пока. We say давай закажем пиццу. Да. Давай закажем пиццу. It's a, uh, and a, a girl answer. Давай. Let's try. Да. Let's go. Let's go or let's do. Да. Давай закажем пиццу. Давай. Okay. So guys, today I hope you learned some words, yeah? and please, uh, I I please ask you try to see different source, okay? The kind of stuff that uh, we already know is about товарищ, KGB, mafia, gopniks. Um, um, uh, or some kind of uh, Vitas. Vitas now became really huge meme with his songs everywhere. Or tattoo. It was really, really a lot of time ago. Okay, so you are late for the reality. Yeah, it's a little bit like a YouTube. I talk right now, but five seconds later you uh, hear it. Okay, so try to follow source that or native speakers follow or something that is really near uh, of nowadays okay for we be in the same wave now yeah, to understand what's going on around okay so uh всем спасибо thank you guys i hope uh, i was uh, not so fast talking and uh, we back uh, with elina i don't know elina we will back with you together and guys, if you uh, if you have any question, if you have any question, please let me know. Okay, about uh, some slangs or maybe some abbreviation of message. 
Большое спасибо. Маргерштерн. Yes, Маргерштерн. Yes, already, already more near. Да? Morgenstern is uh, one of the rapper of new generation in Russia. Actually, the best for foreigners because uh, we are in the same level. Uh, the rapper of new uh, school in Russian uh, think that nobody understands what they think. So we are absolutely in the same. The native speaker and the foreign they are in the same level because nobody understands them. So it, it's a perfect. If you will take you're already part of the songs. It's good to learn new words, slang. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you repeat all the words? Oh, guys, it was ща, сейчас, выхи, выходной, okay? хз, давай, да, давай, one more, чо, скок, скок, how much, лям, лям, тыща, Okay, thank you very nice and quick. You're welcome. It's good to know the word slang. Yes, I hope so. Now try, guys, uh, to see some kind of source. For example, in Russian uh, uh, YouTube, we have a Reddit, like the kind of Reddit is called Pikabu. It's really cool. It's a really cool source. One of the biggest uh, with all memes that exist. But try uh, to consume content uh, in moderate way because it's a lot, a lot of information. Try to choose the way that you want to uh, listen. Okay. And of course, now we have a lot of TikToks. We have reels, so you can find stand-ups that with subtitles with everything. Okay. Elena, where you are? We are waiting for you. Я тут. Я тут. Отлично. Так, меня слышно, да? Так, меня слышно. I don't know. Yeah, I hope, guys, you can yeah. hear me. Thank you so much, Alena, for your very interesting quiz and explaining of the slang and abbreviation. I hope that now, guys, when you see these messages, if someone sends you хз, чо, or чо делаем на выхи, you are gonna understand this. As I mentioned before, even if you're learning Russian, you know some Russian language, but if you see this kind of чо, выхи, uh, and these shortenings or symbols that I explained, you will not understand this, but after this stream, after watching, this video, now you're good to communicate uh, with Russians on the internet. Uh, if you have more questions, you can uh, ask now. And Alena and I invite you to our Russian speaking club, which starts when Alena? Um, I think on the third, yeah, on the third of April. So it's gonna yeah. be next Monday already. And it's our community where people from all over the world learn Russian. Alena is our teacher and we make it in on Telegram, Telegram Messenger. So it's like a group chat where everyone uh, connects and Alena sends uh, studying materials almost yeah, or every day, yeah, Alona. Uh, she sends some materials which you can study um, always in a fun way as it was uh, during the stream um, and uh, we send you like this studying materials with the most important uh, updated modern vocabulary which is not outdated you know from 19th or this Boris and Mafia and KGB which already doesn't exist like uh, all the updated vocabulary and the most useful one which you can use in a real Russian language conversations and every weekend we have live speaking sessions via Zoom where we practice everything that we've learned during the week and overall we focus on practice it's not about passive learning where you just um, listening to music, listening how, uh, like watching movies where uh, people speak, uh, learning words. Uh, the most important thing is to learn the language in an active way and to start speaking, start practicing and 
we have three groups from zero elementary and pre-intermediate and in each group also in from zero group where we start from scratch like even if you don't know the alphabet you know nothing in Russian you join this group from zero and even in this group uh, we practice like from the very first lesson we practice with the uh, audio messages video messages and every weekend on uh, zoom so I think Alona can tell you a bit more about her uh, teaching methods and explain a bit more what you're gonna do during three weeks starting from April 3rd. Uh, so, so guys, we are half a Russian-speaking club. It's a, uh, a little bit a different way of um, uh, normal traditional speaking club. Why? Uh, because we are studied during this time. So, what I wanna? It's uh, one part of the week we study. We learn grammar, we learn uh, vocabulary, and we prepare everything for Saturday. Okay, Saturday or Sunday normally we have speaking session for you arrive there and speak okay for we not explain anything or spend time when i speaking i want to for you speak because uh to arrive on speaking uh for on the speaking uh mode on a speaking level we have to prepare so we preparing during the week with a special topic with a special uh, uh structure uh grammar and vocabulary and practicing uh, during the weekend OK, so we have uh, three levels uh, and normally in every, every level we have uh, different uh, uh, topics because um, I have people who can already speak fluently, have someone who only start with alphabet or learn in Duolingo and never speak with other people. And it's uh, good because uh, in our speaking club we have a real situation when we don't know each other so we are have the stress situations that we have normally during the life because we are going to some place that we don't know we meet with the people we don't know and we don't know how to speak we are afraid we are lost to everything we forget so we're training in this situation to not lost in real life yeah it's like this so i will be happy to see you uh, already next Monday we start and you can use uh, promo codes that you can uh, see on your screen during this week. Yeah, Elena, we will have some deadline to use this uh, promo code. Yes, uh, you can use this code on our website April 10 till this Saturday, which is April 1st. Yeah, I recommend to do it right now so that you don't forget that there is a promo code. It gives 10% of the price. So yeah, I uh, see you guys uh, on April 3rd in our club. Hope to see you there. And of course, in the live speaking sessions, which I think is the uh, best part of the speaking club, where you meet with all the participants and with Alona live, discuss different topics, practice, make different tasks. Um, and if you have any questions, you can ask now, guys, concerning this stream um, about the communication on the internet or slang, abbreviations, anything we explained. Otherwise, uh, we can answer during the speaking club. Elena, we, uh, we can start to learn uh, to learn with our, with our names. names. Okay, guys, we have two different names. Elena, Elena, ne Elona, Aleona, no, Elena, and my name is Alio, Alona. Okay. Elena and Alona, because a lot of people <laughs> sometimes follow for years and don't know the names. Yeah, guys, it's important. The key of success is to know the name of people. So I hope I, uh, I think everything uh, is clear. Uh, some people ask uh, what is promo code? Yes, April 10, duh? Elena, April 10? April 10, yeah. 
uh, thank you guys for joining us and uh, to have interested in the culture and the new languages. It's extend your memory and make some neurology new connection in your mind. Yeah, I hope that you will enjoy and have some good moment with us. Yeah, I also hope that you learned something new, something useful, which helps to make new um, neural connections in your brain and overall learning language uh, is about that. And yeah, get out of your comfort zone, come to our club. If you're scared to learn Russian, just, just do it, just start. Uh, don't look for excuses like if you're starting anything new, your brain is always hesitant. It makes so many excuses all the time. Uh, it is always scared of something new. But uh, if you're scared, it means that that's the way to go. Because every time in your life, uh, when you do something that you're scared of, usually the best things start to happen. So, yeah. Uh, you just uh, need to uh, stop these voices with excuses and just start. Yeah, start a new language, start some other challenge. If you're scared, just yeah, do it, do it, do it. And stop listening to the voices in your head with excuses. If you have this voice, it means that that's the way to go. If it's not comfortable for you, you need to go there. Uh, well, thank you everyone, <laughs> people saying I'm so scared, yeah, then come to our club. Um, yeah, спасибо, everyone, and пока-пока, and... Всем спасибо, до встречи. Yeah, some people are gonna watch this in recording, also thank you if you watched this video, пока-пока, спасибо.